Hello everybody, I am Hari. Welcome to my class. So today we are going to learn about the conformations of Pyranose and Furanose rings. So in previous class we have discussed that the Pyranoses and the Furanoses are the ring structures of monosaccharides that exist in the aqueous solutions or even in the physiological conditions. Right? So the three dimensional conformation of monosaccharide units is very important. The three dimensional conformations of individual monosaccharide units is very crucial because it is very important and it plays major role in the biological properties of the polysaccharides that they were in. So as we have discussed the six membered ring structures those are the pyranoses they generally do not exist in planar structure. It is because of the tetrahedral geometry of the carbon atom. So because of the tetrahedral geometry, of saturated carbon atoms in the monosaccharide units, we cannot expect the conformation of the monosaccharides just to be in the planar structure. So because of this reason, the pyranoses, they adopted two conformations and those two conformations are chair conformation and other one is the boat conformation. So in, in, in any of these two conformations, the monosaccharide units or the pyranoses that they exist in the aqueous solutions. Okay, so let's discuss about these two conformations. So whatever may be the conformation, it may be either chair conformation or the boat conformation, whatever it may be, the substituents that are attached to the carbon atoms in the monosaccharides, they exist in any of the two orientations. So those orientations are axial and equatorial. Even this is same for the boat conformation. Whatever may be the conformation of the monosaccharide, the substituent molecules that are attached to the carbon atom in the monosaccharide like OH, CH2OH, hydrogen atom. So all these substituents that are attached to the carbon atom, they they depend on any of these two orientations. They attach to the carbon atom with any of these two orientations. So let's know about these orientations that is axial and the equatorial. Coming to the axial uh, orientation or axial bonds, it is if the atom or molecule that is attached to the carbon atom in the axial plane, then the substituent will be perpendicular to the plane of the monosaccharide unit. If we consider this is the plane of the monosaccharide unit, then the uh, substituent, axial, axial substituent will be perpendicular to the plane of the ring. Okay. Coming to the equatorial one, it will be parallel to the plane of the ring. If we consider this is the plane of the ring, axial substituents will be perpendicular to the plane of the ring, but equatorial substituents will be parallel to the plane of the ring. So coming to these two, axial substituents, they cause more steric hindrance. So here axial bonds are perpendicular to the plane, and here equatorial bonds are parallel to the plane of the ring and axial bonds they cause more steric hindrance. Axial bonds they cause more steric hindrance. Steric hindrances it is nothing but the repulsion when two uh, similar kinds of molecules or when two bulkier atoms they are in the same plane and very close to each other they cause certain repulsion. So for this because of this repulsion to maintain the whole structure in the same plane same orientation the molecule needs more energy because it cannot be stable. When two molecules are repelling each other then it, it cannot be stable in its position. So for that molecule to exist in that particular orientation, the molecule, the whole uh, molecule, it needs more amount of energy. So it is unstable compared to the equatorial one. Here, since they are parallel to the plane, they do not cause any steric hindrance. So it doesn't need much energy for the molecule to be stable. So because of this, 
compared to axial substituents equatorial substituents they cause very less steric hindrance and they need very less energy so because of this this orientation is more stable compared to the substituents which are in this orientation okay so let's know about this with the example of d glucose so here coming to a uh, glucopyranose glucopyranose is more predominant in chair form than boat conformation so let's know about that chair conformation of beta d glucose so if we observe in our previous class we have discussed that alpha d glucopyranose and beta d glucopyranose when uh, when they are in the equilibrium mixture we can see beta uh, beta d glucopyranose is more predominant compared to alpha d it is around 64% of the equilibrium mixture contains beta d glucopyranose but only 36% exists in alpha d pyranose form what might be the reason why equilibrium mixture contains more concentration of beta d glucose compared to alpha d glucopyranose so let's know about that so here if you observe the chair conformations of alpha d glucopyranose and beta d glucopyranose we can see the axial positions are occupied by just hydrogen atoms so here we can see the axial positions they are occupied by the hydrogen atoms these are very simple molecules coming to the bulkier atoms like hydroxyl groups and ch2oh they just have moved to periphery so it doesn't take much energy because they are moved to the periphery and here coming to hydroxyl group this hydroxyl group is just the difference between these two all the remaining structure is the same right coming to this hydroxyl group here in the beta d glucopyranose form this oh is positioned with equatorial bond but here coming to oh group in the alpha d glucopyranose which is occupied with the axial bond so as we have discussed when the bulkier atoms are in the axial position or they are attached to the carbon atom with the axial bonds they need more amount of energy because which causes a kind of steric hindrance so to balance that and to be in that same structure same orientation same conformation this whole molecule it needs more amount of energy but here since this bulkier atom occupies the periphery with equatorial bond which is parallel to the whole ring it doesn't need higher energy doesn't need much energy compared to alpha d glucopyranose so this compound is more stable compared to alpha d glucopyranose that is why if we observe the equi equilibrium mixture as we have discussed in case of muta rotation in the equilibrium mixture the more stable compound the more stable conformation exists with higher predominance compared to this alpha d glucopyranose okay so this is this one thing is clear here glucopyranose which predominantly exists in chair conformation compared to boat conformation so this we have already discussed that is the chair conformation of beta d glucose so as we have discussed the bulkier atoms they occupy the periphery with the equatorial plane coming to boat conformation here if we observe the bulkier compounds bulkier atoms or molecules like oh and ch2oh so they are very close to each other so because of this they create more steric hindrance and it it is highly impossible for the glucopyranose to exist with boat conformation because it creates more steric hindrance so it needs lot of energy compared to the chair conformation so that is why it is unstable compared to the chair conformation of beta d glucopyranose so because of this yeah, glucopyranose which predominantly exists in chair conformation and between these two alpha and beta uh, glucopyranose is beta d glucopyranose is more predominant in aqueous solutions okay so this is all about the conformations of pyranose rings so let's know even about the conformation of furanose rings that right? pyranose rings even the furanose rings also they do not exist simply as the planar rings so here furanose rings can be occur the four atoms in the ring will be almost coplanar coming to the fifth atom it will be a bit away from the plane 
So those kind of structures or the conformations, those are called envelope forms because the structures of these furanose rings, they resemble the envelope forms with back flap raised. Okay, so here we can discuss with the ribose structure. Here this structure is the C3 endo. So if you observe this structure which resembles like this, so the atoms in the ring that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these five, among these 5 atoms, 4 atoms will be in the plane and the 1 atom, 1 carbon atom, it will be raised up. So here we can see this is carbon 1, 2 and this is the third one, 4 and here the oxygen. So all these 4 atoms are in the plane but one thing will be raised up like in the envelope form. So since the third position is raised up and which is towards which is in the plane of CH3O that is the fifth carbon this is called C3 endo. C3 means here the third carbon. Okay and coming to this one C2 endo so here this one is like this. Okay it will be like this oxygen first carbon and the second one is raised up. Third one fourth one. So here this structure is called C2 endo. Here the puckered carbon is the second one C2. Oxygen carbon 1, carbon 2, 3, 4 and here this raised one is within the plane of CH2OH. So the puckered carbon will be towards the CH2OH in both the cases. But here C3 is puckered and here C2 is puckered. Since these structures they resemble the envelope form, so these structures are called envelope structures. Most of the biomolecules, the ribose moiety, will be either in the C2 endo or in C3 endo.